the Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. Hello, friend. That is the sound of a sweet, sweet celebration. It's Jemmy. I'm not sure if you've heard the big news, but David Butler's Florida Beard Podcast has been recently picked up by the Florida Podcast Network. Yay! Well, as you're about to hear, this is going to be a very exciting partnership. Dave has been doing his Florida Beer blog, which you can find at floridabeerblog.com, for five years now. Or you may recognize him from having been a roaming reporter on Finding Florida episode 19A. Now, with him joining the network, we'll work to take his show to the next level. And we now have an official launch date. So excited. The Florida Beer Podcast will be joining Florida Podcast Network with its 21st episode on the 4th of July. So you want to be sure that you search and subscribe now so you don't miss that first official episode of Florida Podcast Network. And now you're about to be treated to a special introduction to Dave by Glenn and I. And I know you're going to love him as much as we have. And if you're interested in being involved in the Florida Beer Podcast as a guest or a sponsor, please feel free to reach out for more information on how to get your brand in front of FPN's audience of thousands all across Florida. Email me, Jemmy, J-A-I-M-E at floridapodcastnetwork.com or head to floridapodcastnetwork.com slash Florida Beer Podcast. Thanks, and now it's time to introduce you to David Butler, host of the Florida Beer Podcast, debuting the 4th of July. Well, welcome everybody to this special bonus announcement here. We are very excited because we have a new show that we are welcoming onto Florida Podcast Network. And Glenn and I are very excited to introduce you to David Butler, who some of you may already know as the Florida Beer Blog Guy. Hello, David. I'm going to make Glenn drink more beer. <laughs> so it's no longer just, just my say, mission? <laughs> yeah. This is uh, Jemmy's dream show to have on the network. It's amazing <laughs> that the first one we get on is about beer. I uh, just, well, just no, saying. it's not the first we have. Okay, now you're going to make our other host mad at you. <laughs> it's not the first <laughs> show we have on the network, but it is the show that I, it was the first show I thought of. When I thought about building out the Florida Podcast Network, I was like, I have to have a show about beer. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. But why did you decide to have a blog about beer? Because you've been doing your beer blog now, David, for like five years, right? Yeah, five years. And to be honest with you, beer is a topic, especially nowadays, is the perfect fit when you're talking about Florida because it's grown beyond what was traditionally in the 80s and 90s being cases of mass-produced water and you know animal house and things like that yeah. to a major part of local and state economies, a major player of tourism in the region. And there's a lot more that's going into it than what had previously been thought. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I'm not really interested in brewing per se but let's you know let's celebrate it let's talk about it let's show people what we have so yeah there's the brew district now right in my in my town right right here in boynton beach there's a they literally there's street signs pointing out the breweries around it's kind of crazy and people are like brewing in their basements now and then i mean every time i turn around it seems like there's a new brewery popping up in florida it's kind of explosive isn't it um it is definitely what you have to realize about florida is that we're we're pretty late to the game so whereas places like north carolina and california and colorado you go there and literally there's a brewery on every block especially in places like denver and so on whereas florida we still have a long way to go before we hit market saturation kind of like them so it's it, it's there it's just growing and growing nicely rapidly that's good that's good so tell us a little bit about the florida beer blog and the kind of stuff that you've been talking about and experiencing in the years that you've been doing that 
Well, it, it definitely Florida craft beer was a very different landscape about five years ago. There were a lot of places now that did not exist. Um, oh, yeah. you know, for example, but in Miami really wasn't much of anything. Uh, had a little bit going on in St. Pete. Tampa was starting to really kick up. And now you've got just all sorts of breweries and places that you never thought of, like Wiki Wachi. Mm-hmm. There's actually two phenomenal breweries in that area. Uh, Glenn, you've got one right down the street from you in Ocala. And then <laughs> keeps pushing just you. Keeps amazing pushing we have one in Ocala at all. So I'm just saying. <laughs> but And that's the thing. Like you go up to Lake City, one of the best breweries in the state of Florida is in Lake City, but nobody knows where that is unless you're going to prison. <laughs> but it's <laughs> and actually, Jimmy, we passed Lake City on our way up to our Tallahassee episode. And you didn't think to drop me off yep. at the prison. Thank you so <laughs> I much. Didn't know. Glenn. See, nobody ever goes to Lake City. It's just an exit on the I seventy five. But to be honest with you, and you, if you go to Lake City now, the brewers at Hall Powder Brewing, it's a beautiful building. It's I want to say it's 80 or 90 years old. It started life as, I think, a post office, and it's gone through some iterations. And now not only do they have a brewery, but especially with these small cities, that brewery is starting to become the anchor of a revitalization. And if you go to Lake City now, opposed to maybe even five years ago, it's very different. You're starting to see businesses come in. You're starting to see events come in. You're starting to see that growth that breweries seem to really bring with them. Well, that that leads me to a question. Sorry, Jimmy. I just this is a basic question, actually. What was the catalyst that made microbrews? What was the turning point? To be honest with you, the person that we probably have to think would be, uh, who was the president before? President Jimmy Carter. (laughs) Really? That's like before, before, before. He like doesn't drink at all. So, I mean. (laughs) Well, I mean, take a look at his brother. His brother had beer, but it was Jimmy Carter who signed into law the permission to let people homebrew and make Uh. it home. Before him, it was illegal. And now all these brewers, you talk to them and they've all been home brewing for six, seven, eight, uh, nine, okay. ten years. And as they're home brewing, they don't want to brew the same thing over and over again. They're really starting to branch out. And eventually they produce so much and they have so much support in the community that they decide to, to get some capital together and, and open up shop. Well, thank goodness they do. I mean, you're right. They're just popping up. We've been to quite a few. Um, one I know that you know of in Tallahassee, Proof Brewing. We uh, They hosted us there. Um, we, you know, we've been to do South. We've been to a few different places. So to see what it, what's really interesting is a lot of breweries, when they open, they take over like abandoned warehouses and other kind mm-hmm. of buildings. And yeah, you're right. It's part of the, I never really thought about it before, but you're right. It's part of the revitalization of different places because with a brewery comes festivals and events and they've become really part of the fabric of the community. And one thing that I noticed that you, you realize, and we'll get into how I've noticed that late in a minute here, but a lot of um, these breweries that are opening, they're not opening to be, you know, bang out bars where you go and get wasted. No, they're really like family oriented spots, right? Well, it's it's a true brewery in the traditional European sense. Like, I don't want kids in bars because you think about bars <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> to... I mean, my first thought is South Beach or, yeah. you know, there are some bars like that. That is, you know, you go there to get, as you said, wasted and go home with someone and that's boring. But with a brewery, it is a true community space. And you see some phenomenal places around the state, like Three Daughters in St. Pete or Palm City in Fort Myers, where they know they really want to involve the kids because the kids come, they have a good time, the parents stick around, and nobody's there to get drunk they're there to relax they're there to enjoy and appreciate the artistry of what the brewers have put in the glass but it's a completely different mindset i don't believe in babies and bars but my (laughs) daughter has been to breweries before she was born (laughs) i love it i can only imagine your your wife filling up to the bar (laughs) brewery literally it's awesome 
literally that has happened actually <laughs> i love it i love it i i I'll, I'll i'll neither um i'll neither i'll neither claim nor deny that i ever did the same when i was pregnant <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. I mean, now, now for full, now, now let me say that she did not drink any yeah, alcohol. Yeah, neither did I, for full disclosure as what? well. <laughs> full yes. Clarity. Neither did I. Say but it, it is fun to order one and just see the expression on everybody else's face. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so you ha- you, you're you married. You And both you and your wife have teaching backgrounds, right? And um, <laughs> and everything. So tell us a little bit about you live in Coral Springs, uh, which is southwest of me, and uh, so yes, in Broward County. So tell us a little bit about uh, your area and what you, what you like to do. Um, well, with Broward County, there's there's enough going on to where I have a really good time raising our daughter because the Fort Lauderdale area has so much to do. It's got a, enough museums and parks, and then we're kind of centrally located. If we want to go down to Miami, it's only an hour away. If we want to go up to West Palm, it's only an hour away. And between those three major counties, there's just a ton of fun stuff yeah, to do, we which is have great. It going on in this like little tri county area that we live in, don't we? <laughs> That's pretty nice. Yeah. It's pretty nice. So I alluded to a minute ago. Um, that I have found out a little bit about what you have found out about the beer scene by mm-hmm. um, by actually listening to the podcast that you've already started. So what we're yeah. going to be doing is taking your podcast and bringing it into the fold and taking it to the next level. But tell us a little bit about what your show is and is going to be. Well, it's kind of funny because there's enough. There's a lot of beer podcast in the state of florida and as you said i've been blogging for several years now uh one of the beers that i reviewed was from uh, bo weekends which is in central florida and they had partnered with another beer podcast and i kind of put it on my review of their beer that hey maybe i'll do a podcast sometime soon and enough of my readers said yeah you should <laughs> to where i just went ahead and did a podcast and it's interesting i, I treat the blog and the podcast as different avenues for the same sorts of things. So with the blog, it's very much focused on brewery visits and the beers that they have, whereas the podcast, I will expand on that. I do a lot of interviews with breweries, obviously, because I enjoy looking at that. But I'll talk about events that are going on and speak to the people that are creating the events. Um, Anybody that looks at tourism, I've had people from Visit Florida on the podcast. I've had some of the big beer passport that you find those passport programs that Mm -hmm. you find them on there um got some other ones that i'm hopefully working on that i'll don't want to release just yet um (laughs) anything that just sort of has to deal with beer in the sunshine state not specifically only talking to brooms well, nice. Yeah, I feel like um, you're going to be able to dive into the art and crafting of brewing, of brewing and beer and crafting and all that stuff. And the industry of beer in Florida, the events, the festivals. Let me tell you right now, I'm, I'm just warning you. I'm going to be there like everywhere you go because it's going to be a party at <laughs> the time and I want to be there. So <laughs> but right now, if people want to join your party at the Florida Beer Blog, where do they go? FloridaBeerBlog.com. It's pretty wow, simple. You've really made it hard for people to find you, haven't you? <laughs> well, I, you know, something I, I, when I was trying to find a name, I wanted something simple. It's about Florida and it's about beer. And there you go. Somebody had not taken the name, <laughs> which was a miracle. So I just went ahead and grabbed it. Uh, it's the Instagram and Twitter at Florida Beer Blog because that's really difficult. <laughs> um, and then FL Beer Blog. There on Facebook. Go. I think somebody had it on there. Okay. Gosh darn it. I know, right? And I know that you and considering your branding are thinking about doing all kinds of fun things. And I hope you don't mind yeah. my mentioning, but I'm glad that we have Glenn on the line with us because he has a little bit of experience <laughs> in this. Um that one thing that you would like to do in the future is a Florida beer cruise and Glenn with the Horse Radio Network has done the Horse Lovers Cruise. So <laughs> maybe he Yeah, we got eat- another one coming up in uh, February. We have fifty people signed up so far. Yeah, so, so maybe he can ma- help you make that happen. Going? <laughs> I'm volunteering you, Glenn. I, I will give you all the tips you need. It's a lot of fun. All we that had a great means time. He's going to pass you off to his travel agent. That's all that means. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jemmy was great. Jemmy was along the first one. We just had a blast. We really did. Yeah. We but did. how many horses went on the cruise? Yeah. Uh, none. Uh, no horses. We left the horses <laughs> at home, and we all had a good time anyway. Just the people who love horses. <laughs> Actually, I have a feeling, that the, of, Nassau. I have a feeling so, the Florida beer cruise will, will still have a lot of beer on the cruise. So. Well, and one thing about horse people is they did know how to drink. There was no problem. <laughs> so maybe we'll see a few of them on the Florida Beer Cruise as well. <laughs> oh, man. Well, David, thank you so much. We're very excited to be welcoming you and the Florida Beer Podcast onto the Florida Podcast Network. We can't wait to see where this show goes and takes you and takes everybody. And we're just excited to see what, what uh, comes of it. So thank you so much, David, and welcome. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Glad to be a part of the team. Absolutely. And so listeners, stay tuned for f- future announcements. Stay tuned to our social media. You can follow us at floridapodcastnetwork.com or flpodcastnet on all the social things. And you'll find the updates here. But if you want to be the first to know, then be sure to jump into Facebook, into our exclusive closed Facebook group full of super fans of Florida Podcast Network called the FPN Insiders. In the meantime, visit David at FloridaBeerBlog.com. Thank you, Matt.